Listen, you shouldn't have to stretch your budget to buy jeans with a little give. High-end denim can cost hundreds of dollars, but bargain brands don't offer the same level of style and comfort. Yeah. You got you can't get some jeans that cost you hundreds of dollars and no. like have to do a juice cleanse to get into them. <laughs> totally. So distilled, spelled D S T L D, they've revolutionized the fashion industry with their timeless luxury grade denim. So you get jeans that would normally cost you hundreds starting at just sixty five bucks. Yeah. They eliminate these crazy markups because they refuse to work with middlemen. Refuse. They ship directly to you for free and guarantee the fit, or they'll send you a new pair until they're perfect. Distilled jeans are built to last and will be a staple in your closet for years. They also have a bunch of fall jackets so if you're like into a classic denim or you want like a bomber jacket you can just expect the same level of quality okay and so for a discount go to dstld.com slash feral and you'll get ten dollars off your first order that's dstl wait d.com slash feral for ten dollars off bye thanks bye ali let me ask you a question yeah fire away dude what fire away dude oh (laughs) yes or no finding the right hair color for you ally yeah can be a challenge uh what color is my hair right now burgundy yeah was that on purpose no did i need to use e-salon yes you did oh i fucked it up oh wait (laughs) you can scratch that that no it's great e-salon offers professional grade (laughs) leave that in (laughs) <laughs> completely personalized hair color that's created just for you and delivered right to your door. Allie, you fucking need this. I need it so much. This is the last time I will color my hair without taking the steps to get the right color. I grabbed a color off the shelf. It was the wrong color. My hair is maroon now. Don't do it. Allie, do you love questionnaires? Yes. Here's a hair questionnaire. Upload your photo and a personal colorist will formulate your individually blended color from over 15 thousand pigments oh my god i know i need e-salon in a time machine to go back to yesterday (laughs) totally well they've got you covered there's a hundred percent satisfaction guaranteed if you're not happy Allie. oh god i need with your color it will give you a free reformulation or refund i think anything's better than what i did to myself before you look cute thanks dude but you know what? I like that the color doesn't fade. Like they have the grays covered. Because we get, I get some grays every once in a while. I mean, at 23 years old, I our know. gray is like pretending to start to come in. I know. It's probably because we're such big thinkers. We're so young. So you can visit esalon.com slash slumber party, all one word. And do that. You get 50% off your first order. So that's 10 bucks for your personalized hair color, which is crazy because the last time I got my hair cut- colored in a salon, it was like $180. Dude, you can do it your freaking self. I've been doing it my freaking self for years and years. Yeah, I just, I really got the wrong color. So I need to use eSalon. You get 50% off your first box at eSalon.com slash slumber party. So go do that. Don't don't be an Allie Ward. Send us photos too. Hashtag it at, I don't know, Allie in Georgia. Let's see your hair. Yeah, just tag us in it on Instagram. Let's see your pictures. Let's do it. I want to look at your hair. Bye. Feral Audio. Mrs. Hardstark? Yes! You're Mrs. Hardstark. Uh, you're, you're right. Is that weird? Yes. Have you used that yet? No, but today for the first time I introduced Vince as my husband. Whoa! This is my husband Vince. It was weird. Really? Who yeah. did you introduce him to? My uncle. Oh. Yeah. Was he at the wedding? No. Okay, then that makes sense. Yeah. Um, <laughs> has he, have you heard him say, uh, where, where am I, where's my wife? He introduced me as his wife and I was like, this is awesome. Did you pee your pants at all? I did. Okay, cool. Did you well, learn anything? Oh, well, wait. yeah. We weren't actually married until the other day at Bar Lubitsch, technically. We should tr- close Pardon? those windows. Wait, I'm sorry. I need more information on okay. Bar Lubitsch. Eh. It's kind of, you can kind of hear motorcycles, but I don't think anyone cares. I don't think so. Okay. okay. Wait, you got married at Bar Lubitsch? Yeah, we forgot to sign the wedding papers at the Madonna Inn when we got married. And so we went to our, the guy who married us, Josh Weinstein. He has a Thursday night show at Bar Lubitsch called Josh and Josh. <laughs> oh, no. So we went to the show and had him sign the marriage license there along with our two friends who were there, Vince's like best friends who were there, signed as witnesses because they have, they're like comedians, so they were there too. Oh my God, that's hilarious. So we technically got married at Bar Lubitsch. Well, cheers, Georgia. Thank Mrs. you. Mrs. Hardstar. Thank you. Clinking. Okay, what did you learn this week? I want to know what you learned first. 
What okay. I learned is really dumb. Anyway, okay. what I learned is that um, all right. So Thomas Edison, mm-hmm. who we all know, he invented uh, he invented something called the electric pen that never really caught on. Basically, it was uh, part of a complete outfit for duplicating handwritten documents and drawings. Oh, so it was an electric motor driven uh, pen. Oh, and so it never caught on. But another industry ended up adopting it, and it's, like, one of their main tools. Oh, shit. Can you guess what it is? No. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I know you know this. A stylus. It's a stylus of some kind. It's Xerox? It's an electric pen. Electric pen? Specifically. Is it the thing on Jeopardy? No. <laughs> it's a tattoo gun. Shut. Because it had needles, uh, and it poked these holes, like, you know, really fast and you can copy a document or write a document and then you can just uh you know screen print it oh my so it's just God. like a needle machine and tattoo artists are like wait a second how long did it take before the tattoo artist poached it i think it was pretty quick because <gasps> because he invented it and immediately like better forms of copying came along so he never really no one ever really used it oh my god and tattoo artists were like this is something we could use can you imagine if you used an inkjet printer on your butt to like get a tattoo if you're like no one uses these why are we doing that that sounds so much less painful matrix i got an extra one (laughs) what did you um do you know that okay i learned um do you know where the word where ouija board comes from no the word ouija ouija no think about it ouija ouija oh Mm. from the photographer no, but that's a good guess, actually. The Ouija was a photographer. Um, Ouija. This is so dumb. No, why? You're going to be annoyed at how okay. dumb this is. It comes from the French for yes. Uh-huh. It's a German for yes. Oh. We are. We are. Oh, my God. That's really the, cute, it, It's just called a yes-yes board. <laughs> Doesn't it seem less scary about poltergeist? Because it's oui. called yes-yes? We oui, it does. That's, yeah. I, that's not stupid. That's like such a stupid fact that people should know. I it's know. like fun and you're like someone who's listening is going to say it at a party that they go to tonight and people are going to be like, oh, I want to be friends with this person because they know cool stuff. Um, let's introduce our guest and see what she learned this week. Um, our guest is so funny. We love her so much. Mm-hmm. She's actually a repeat guest, but we're going to get into that. Um, <laughs> she is a comedian and a writer and a host of we should have a podcast on feral audio which is also fucking awesome mm-hmm. courtney peroso whose name i say wrong almost every that time that was right i know Yay. i've been practicing all day because i always want to say peruso <laughs> um courtney peroso just kidding what'd you learn this week um i learned something really stupid but this is the only like true thing that i the really two could... of you need to stop insulting yourselves yeah oh, can Jesus. we get a fist bump on that no yeah i just said sorry yeah (laughs) uh do you guys know the word plurnt it's like a slang word like a millennial word no okay like like, it's like plur like peace love unity respect oh do you know what that fuck that is plur i've heard that like 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 techno kids use it right and turnt because somebody (laughs) i know turnt and plurnt are like similar yeah it's like i was working on this video and one of the girls who's like helping to write it she's like 22 and she was like shouting lines at me to say and i was like excuse me what's plurnt <laughs> and she had to explain it to me oh my god people are so young these days like 22, 22. doesn't seem that much younger than me but then i'm like no 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 they were born 94 in a different yeah they were born after jurassic park came out in the theaters and she was like telling me she was like well i used to be into raves but now i think they're stupid i was like Really, bitch! I used to go to them when you were before you were born. <laughs> well, I know she's really cute, though. I'm sure she's adorable. The, like the one millennial we sometimes work with, who's like this amazing makeup artist. Yeah, who just knows everything about everything, and we end up. I feel so old around her. I know, but she she has the she has like a weird wisdom of like a forty year old. Yeah, she does. But I realized that I was goth before she was born, and it really <laughs> fucked me up for a little she's bit. She's a little gothy. But what do you? Can you, Courtney? Mm-hmm. Please use plurnt in a sentence. Mm-hmm. Oh God. I mean, I don't even know. Like, might I not still even need to be, do more research. It might not even be a <laughs> sentence. It might just be like a... I'm going to get plurnt tonight, or, oh. right? Like, Pe- I think that's what they were telling me to say. Is that when you get peace, love, unity, respected? Yeah. You take yeah, mushrooms, like, basically. Like, on drugs, I guess. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it seems... It does seem fun. It's I do a, plan on getting plurnt at some point in my life. Ideally, <laughs> that's what happens when you take drugs, but usually it's not. It's on my bucket list Please. to get plurnt. <laughs> um, do you ever use turnt? I mean, no. Turn and taint are too close. Oh no, they're yeah. too close. Taint's very close. I feel like I like I don't like words that blow up too fast. I'm suspicious. Yeah, because they'll <laughs> go away, and by the time you're actually using them as like in your in your daily life, they're out of style, and you look like an idiot. Can we have a moment of silence for Fleek? 
Fleek. I never liked Fleek. I know. Mm-hmm. On Fleek, um, you guys. Rest in Fleek. <laughs> <laughs> it had um, a moment. Um, do you want to play a slumber party yeah. game? So yeah. Should, are we doing like a special one? That should our, we do a special our one? Guests Let's, our guests. Let's. Should viewers? we? Should we explain why why Courtney's in re- our only first time return guest? Even though she, you can't go in the in like. Oh, where's the first episode? You can't. Yeah. Do that. We had a lost episode with Courtney <laughs> we did. because we we really like Courtney. We have this like total girl crush on her, and we had a super mutually awkward first episode wherein I was incredibly awkward. We well, okay. So we have like sister podcasts basically because we're both like we both have two lady podcasts hosts right. we're both on feral we like have been have should have gotten together so long ago and like to podcast and we just haven't and i think did you get nervous i got nervous and i also got nervous about some subject matter that about boys i was afraid was going to come up and so, so you, you led the conversation in a weird direction yeah. that was that was i wasn't very good at it you did ask her a lot about uh like what we don't do which is like so when did you move to LA? And we're like, no, we right. don't do that. I was curious about that though, Courtney, because I really <laughs> like your work a lot. Okay, that's, so nice. that's very nice. I will say I had a great time anyway, and but I think I was also very guarded that day. Mm-hmm. We had a so, weird day. Yeah. Maybe we'll post this one and then we'll post the first one because <laughs> I think that'll be funny, you know. And that's then it'll be true. Like, and they're gonna everyone's gonna be like, yeah, no, that's that would have been weird. But this is the first episode. Yeah, that's true. Unless we ruin this one too. We could ruin this. Let's fucking ruin this. <laughs> Let's do it. So Guys. when did you move to LA, Courtney? Oh no, that's what I did. Well, this is why I brought champagne over. No, it works. This is, is nice. this um no, is this good. a wedding champagne? No, I had Vince specifically buy this for. Are you serious? Today. I'm sorry. Who did, who bought it? My husband. <laughs> Fucking weird. Isn't Thank that you. weird? Thank you. I loved all the pictures. I loved everything. Thank you. So I was excited. everything went perfectly. And I didn't have that thing when you're walking when you think you're gonna walk down the aisle and go, What am I doing? Like or at some point before, you know, as a child of divorce, you're like, This is never gonna work. <laughs> but not one time that entire day was I like, What if this is a mess? Like it that's to me that's like that's a good that's that a is. good way. That's great. <laughs> yeah. So all right. My mom said the day she married my dad, she was like, my mom was an accountant, so everything's numerical, but she was like, I only know maybe 10% about this guy. Holy She's shit. like, but it's a really good 10%, nice. and if the other 90 sucks, then oh well. Yeah. And he turned out to be a thoroughly good guy. Are your parents still married? They are. What the <gasps> fuck? That's crazy, you guys. How did they meet? Yeah. They met in college, uh, and they got married pretty young. They do that? Yeah. They did that then? Yeah, my parents are young, but they had me when they were very young. So they're in their early 50s. Do you think you're always trying to, like, you can't have a relationship unless it looks like your parents? I don't want a relationship that looks like my parents (laughs) at all. Like, I feel like that's never, I kind of knew early on that that wouldn't work for me. My parents have a very traditional marriage. So, like, and that works very well for them. Yeah, for the people they are. Yeah, yeah. I get that. What do you want? What do you not want about it? No offense to your parents. No, no, no. And it works well for them. I just feel like if you want to, you know, my, we had to put my dad's military career first. Like that was always my mom. It was just very like the line. It was just, my mom like took care of us and she was a great mom and like that made her happy. And then my dad was working all day and I just don't live that life. Right. Yeah. No, I don't. Yeah. I don't think any of us really want that. I feel like that kind of happens sometimes too without you expecting it to when you have kids where it's like mm. well what you know what's the sense in you working also you might as well stay home yeah right but that's not really what you want to do and then you become a mommy blogger oh yeah you do but mommy bloggers make dope oh, yeah. amounts of money or you sell fucking you know scarves for cats on etsy <laughs> cat scarves huge market Boom. i'm taking huge it. I'm doing it. huge <laughs> market <laughs> <laughs> if you had to if you had to have okay and then we're gonna yeah, ask you a like slumber this. party question well, yeah, I guess this is, would be an okay slumber party question, right? I like right? this. If you had to start your life over mm-hmm. and just fuck it, burn it to the ground, and like oh. open up an Etsy shop about cat scarves, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> or like move and start your new life somewhere else. Yeah, what would you do? We asked George's husband this last... We're talking last like... Weekend. We're talking like... Yeah. Um, I'm talking like witness protection program i was just gonna say that yeah Yeah. georgia your answer last week was you would move to florida become a waitress or a a manager at a coffee bar (laughs) no i I was like okay (laughs) courtney what's yours do you know i feel like i would want to go into some other kind of art but or just like completely devote 
my life to learning some different skill, but I don't know what that is hmm. on the top of my head. Whatever right. the fuck. I think I would have liked to like be in a band, but I don't. I oh, don't like yeah. any instrument. That well, so I, you wish you like could play a fucking yeah. thing. That's a right. Good one. Yeah. Would you want to be in like a like a one of those people that plays like accordion in a folk band or like punk thrash like kick ass? Yeah, something like that. That's a good, Some kick ass. good one. Yeah. That seems like a good life. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, slumber party question. Yeah. <laughs> Hold on. Do 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 do. Um. Okay, we're going to play, it was my birthday. This is a game in which we ask you, tell us a little bit about either your last birthday mm-hmm. or your best birthday ever. Maybe your worst birthday. Oh, your worst, like do you have a birthday story? Like your most memorable. memorable birthday. Or something you always do on your birthday that's like. I'm not a huge birthday celebrator. Last year was my 30th birthday. And really? it was kind of a non-event and I remember being very upset. Oh. And I was also like dating two guys at once, and I was, so I was like very upset. And like, but none of them did anything. No, I know like, they should have. That's, that's not true. They both separately did things, but like they both kind of made me mad. They What'd didn't they do, do anything wrong. Yeah, I was just like, <laughs> that's just my general feeling <laughs> on my last birthday. And I remember being really drunk because like we go to like. Uh, we were at some bar, but it wasn't very, like, it wasn't organized, so it was just, like, random people yeah. kind of there, and I was, like, drunk and sad, and I, like, walked out of the bathroom, and there was, like, toilet paper on my shoe, and I remember, like, overreacting, like, <gasps> not on my birthday! <laughs> <laughs> like, what? Like, that's so embarrassing, and this is exactly, like, this is how, this is how I should be starting my year, right. with fucking toilet paper on my boot, looking like a fucking loser. <laughs> I feel like when you don't, I feel like everyone, and I'm like this, when you're like, I, I don't want to, I don't want to do anything on my birthday. I don't. And like, even if you don't, you need to fucking plan something because the minute it turns to your birthday, you're going to be like, why didn't, why is no one doing anything? Why didn't I do anything? I should have done something. Well, yeah, I felt weird planning something. I think, I, yeah, I was just, I was like, who am I even going to invite? Right. Like, who? We need to get that out of our heads. Yeah. I know. Would you, woo! Jesus, sorry. <laughs> when is your birthday this year? <laughs> May 16th this, this year. Oh, okay. <laughs> Coming up. <laughs> it's like Hanukkah. It changes just a tiny yeah. bit each year. Mm-hmm. So wait, so your birthday's in a couple months. What are you going to, are you going to rectify this? 31's a good, a good age 31's a great one. You're seasoning in, you're in the door. Yeah. yeah I, I don't know. I, I might try to convince my friend to have a beach rager. <laughs> beach mm. rager? A beach rager. Because <laughs> he lives on the beach. And, oh, yeah. So, but it's like a real commitment if you have a party there because everyone has to like, arranged to like, it has to what be about like, during the day party bus that would be fun oh shit to man. the beach we've done that before Cause. oh Remember? that's right we did take a party bus to a beach yeah that I, was cool yeah. i went in the ocean in your cl- in your underpants i saw it i underpants. did do that Under- i was in my underpants pants. but if you do a daytime thing here's what's cool is you you like invite an inner circle mm-hmm. and you tell those people if you want to invite other people, fine. Mm-hmm. But that way you know that like you have a committed mm-hmm. core group. Yeah. And if it turns bigger than that, great. Mm-hmm. But if you invite like 20 people and like only 10 show up, you'll be like, Wah. You know what's what hard mean? is like, wh- and this is how I felt about the wedding. It's like, mm-hmm. at what at what circle do I stop? Because I know this person through these people. I see them twice a year, but I really like them. Yeah. Do I invite, you know, do you, do you invite them? Cause you'd really like them to be there. Well, then you also have to invite their, their friend that you, you know, yes. this is what Google plus is for. This is why they have all these circles. Really? No one's on Google plus. Never know. mind. Google <laughs> plus has different circles and it's like people, you know, from work, people you see sometimes. Oh I'm not, I've, them. I've only been on Google plus for about one minute. But. Let's get physical. No, let's get, do you want to know some of the new things people have suggested? Yeah. So we asked people. We oh, oh cool. we have a Facebook group. Everyone, please go to it. It's Slumber Party Podcast. Slumber Party Podcast. And we'll add you to the podcast. It's secret, so you can go in and add like and write to everyone your like stuff. Mm-hmm. Okay. And we asked you guys like, what are some Slumber Party games we should play? Right. You can tell us things you learned, uh, things you hate, that, some yeah. things you love. We can even post pictures of dick drawings on there if we want. Oh yeah, I need to post that photo of the card you gave me. But we're not allowed to. We're not allowed to really do that on Twitter. We can't get too gross on Twitter, no, but can't. I feel like in a closed group we can get Wait, as gross what's as What's with the dick drawings? Well, remember when you got in trouble for posting a dick drawing on your Instagram? Yes. I, I thought that was shitty. On my Instagram, who draws dicks? I think everyone, like, everyone likes to draw a dick. I really like to draw a dick. Allie Me gave too. us a card for the wedding that had a bride and groom dick on the cover of it. And I need That's to post true. a photo of it on the, on the Facebook group. Ever since you got in trouble for posting a dick on your Instagram from the from Cooking Channel, yeah. I've been too cautious about what I post. You, it's not too cautious. I made a pipe reference on 
Twitter today and just immediately like, took it down because I got freaked I know, out. I know. Because you just don't want to be like, I mean, we can't say shit. On this podcast, we say all we say so much shit. No, we no one gets in. We don't get in trouble. Wait, who are you afraid of getting in trouble? Now I'm afraid of getting. Not in trouble. you. You're fine. No, you're, a, you're a comedian, comedian. so you're you're it's allowed to say that stuff. That's what I keep telling my parents. <laughs> <laughs> Do they are they easily offended? Um, eh, yeah. Military dad, a little bit tiny. Yeah, yeah, I think they are. They get nervous for me. It's not that they're even. My dad is offended. My dad hates the middle finger, which is so <gasps> stupid. Oh, it's so powerful. It's like I don't I don't know why he. He hates it so much. You're uh, the oldest, though, right? Yeah. So do you flip off the younger ones and you, Courtney? <laughs> no, I mean I just have like dumb pictures. I mean it yeah. is dumb of like a of a like a woman to be like giving the middle finger. No, but that's not. why it's funny, also. Yeah, that's yeah. why it's funny. It's like, I don't know. You know. I realize how much I say the word fuck, but I think it's a great word to use. It, I feel like it makes me feel more powerful. And the middle finger can do that too when used well. When was the last time? Actually, let's play a quick game called Flip the Bird. When was the last oh. time you flipped someone the bird? Do you remember? Driving. Yeah. Driving, and then I'm like, everyone see, saw that. That's so embarrassing. <gasps> but I, where were you driving? I don't even remember that. Really? But I know I was driving. I think I flipped a bird to someone driving also. Yeah. I think someone was mad at me for trying to change lanes, and I'm I was like, like how, how do you feel about this? Yeah. What about you? Did what you flip anyone the bird? I don't really do it like in earnest at people. Mm. <laughs> I, it's We're more like when, when my, no, it's not. It's not. <laughs> you don't really mean it. <laughs> in in traffic, a... I'm usually the one that deserves the middle finger. Oh. I'm sure. So I'm not. You know. Oh no! It's I did like it. sign language for <laughs> us. I did it today. You did not. When did you do it? That's hilarious. <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Allie's going under her new couch. <laughs> Allie, I come don't back. Talk about it. It happened today. I did it under a table. <laughs> Under a table? Yeah. What are you talking? Allie's under the couch. What are you, you talking did, oh, about? Oh, I like this. It, under a table at somebody. On purpose? You're mad at them? No, I just did it under the table because I was. Were you on a date and you did it under the table with the guy you were on a date with? Yeah, he was so boring. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Are you like just as for your just for yourself? Yeah, I was just like Jesus Christ. Holy but it makes you feel shit. better, right? <laughs> That is the most amazing. <laughs> Allie, I swear to God, if after this you say, can we take that part out? No, because like, that's the yet. best thing I've ever fucking yeah. heard. Well, he was talking about guns and stuff. What, was, oh, what about like, guns? What's the stance? Loved them, and I was like, oh. and like, we should be able to have them. Like, it's not, yeah. you know what percentage of the people who like actually do something with their gun, you know, like one of those? Was that him? Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, <laughs> fuck this. Fuck <laughs> <And> it. <laughs> and just, just very gently under the table and you felt better yeah that's yeah. something you do to your parents when you're a teenager and you're like fuck you mom and dad you can't do but that like, i, I think that's it. a really beautiful way to handle that situation because <laughs> yeah. what are you gonna do storm out no you're he's a human being you're a human being I'm but sorry. it made you feel like powerful i love that i like pinch myself when someone's bothering me oh really? yeah, yeah. Like in what situation like if somebody is like really bothering me that's talking to me and i can't escape like i like pinch myself i do that like, too like, i don't know what it is it's like it's like you're still alive yeah yeah. Even though you feel like this is the end of the life, this person's boring the shit out of you. Yeah. It's kind of like a little microaggression you can take out on your arm. Yeah. Because yeah. you, just you know like what I mean? And no one will really notice. I'm just like no. really like squeezing like a tiny part of my skin. Do you pinch other? Like Ali and I will have things. Are you all right? You're like, okay. I'm <laughs> drowning in our, in our you are. tent right now. We'll have things that were like when we're at a dinner or like having in a conversation. Where it's like the you will never know like when you you touch the person's foot with your foot <laughs> and you're you're not pushing but you're like mentally giving the most pressure into their foot that you can with your brain. Oh yeah, oh, no. yeah. I think oh yeah, I think that's very important because it's like you want to like you're like looking across the table at the uh -huh. person like are you feeling the same thing? Yeah, you're feeling. Are you witnessing this? How you're, is we're this? all? I'm not crazy, right? This is yeah. happening. Okay, and yeah. we have to sit here. Or like we're gonna talk oh. so much shit on this as soon as it's over. Oh boy. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> We yeah. were in a meeting once where yeah. we were both like, were you, you were trying to send I me. I heard you. Yeah. You were trying to send me ESP signals <laughs> during the meeting. And I was like, I think I picked those up. I think, I think I was, I, I, yeah. When you're like, I started to dissociate. I did too. Like, like there was no, there was no dimensions. Like there was no 3D anymore. It was like, I was like m every, moving shit with my brain. Pretty sure the guy was on Coke. That guy would that, not stop that talking. Yeah. This fucking. Speaking of not stop talking, let's ask oh, Courtney right. a question. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> right, 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 right. Um, let's do internet crush. 
Who do you have an internet crush on? Who doesn't somebody... have to be relationship or sex. No, 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 no. It can just be like it can be a bunny. It can be f- fucking whatever. It can I be. One. I'm gonna look it up. It can be a hotel Instagram. Anything that you're just like you look at it and you just go, mm. yes. Oh, well, I feel like what popped into my brain is like. I well, I just watched. Have you guys? This is like sort of an internet crush, but also I watched her. Uh, episode of the characters you know Kate Berlant she's in she's I mean I don't know her I met her once but I watched her the characters last night and it like blew my mind but I also think she's like the funniest person well her stand up is fucking it's weird as fuck yeah I've heard that she's I've heard that she's incredible she's like a surrealist comedian it's it's like blow I admire it so much I I'm such a fan and yeah so yeah. I would say that's a good one. That's what's popping in my brain right now. The characters or Kate Berlant specifically? Specifically, I watched three of the episodes, which are all great. They're um, on Netflix. Watched, it just came out. Yeah, it right. just came out. Um, but hers was the first one that I watched. I was so excited to see it, and yeah. it like was just insanely brilliant. I was like having I like had to pause it so I could be like take breath and be like <laughs> this is so genius. If you go to if you guys go to YouTube right now, if you don't want to watch the episode and and Google her, there's a and YouTube her. There is a video she does when she's um, she's a lamp, Nicole. and it's just like a three minute video of like what her life is like as a lamp, <laughs> and it's like so subtle and great and wonderful and like weird. Yeah, it's I've she's seen that so one, weird. and I the one the video with uh, or the short with uh, John Early where they both have tattoos. The premise of the characters is what on Netflix, real quick. It's um they gave I eight or ten or twelve or however many uh comedians they're like character comedians uh their own half hour to do whatever they wanted with it so they're all different i haven't watched all of them yet but hers is like it's all connected and in one world and like her like her writing is amazing but also like her physical comedy and like just her like timing of everything like even like her facial expressions it's like mind-blowingly good can we talk about the video of yours that I that made me have a girl crush on you years ago? Tell it. Oh my god, I love it so much. <laughs> Scream it. It's so dumb. This is part of what made the first episode so awkward. It's how much I gushed about this video and then <laughs> felt really stupid about it. But um but you had a like a character audition reel that was like a fake SNL tape yeah. and it went up like two years ago or something. Yeah. And I have watched it <laughs> so many times. Like I know all of the characters in it. Like, you know, how, <laughs> like you put on the same SpongeBob episode for like a kid and like, they're like, put it on again, put yeah. it on again. Like I have watched it so many times. It's so funny. I f- what is the actual title of it? How can people find it? Oh, it's just called my character real exclamation point. Um, I, cause I, and I like in the description, I like say like, I haven't watched this yet because I can't watch myself. Ha ha ha. Like, so it's, it's as if it's like raw footage of me having a meltdown trying to make my stupid it's SNL so good. character audition tape. Awesome. I'm glad you like it. It's, so and it's please everyone Google as soon as you're done with this episode, watch my character real exclamation point. By Courtney Peroso on it's YouTube. On my channel. It's yeah. so. It's this thing where I remember seeing it and just being like, "Oh, this girl's a genius! Like she's got she. This kid's got what it is. <laughs> it's so funny, but you just have this meltdown and you and you just start like cry whining. And whenever I start getting really frustrated with something, I'll find myself like cry whining in that <laughs> voice. <laughs> It's so good. Anyway, that's your internet. That's crush. my internet crush. Can I talk about baby squirrels for just two seconds? Um, four or May five I? seconds at least. So someone tagged me in like their baby because I had mentioned this um, Polly the. Uh, where am I? Molly Emery? No, the um, <laughs> is the, this how is this the oh turn God. that your marriage has taken already? Anyways, it's called <laughs> Mabel and Marty McSquirrel. Oh shit, man! Look them up. These these people. On Valentine's Day, found two like brand new baby squirrels when this tree got cut down. Oh my god, I'm gonna cut myself. And they were like, "Yes, we will raise you." <laughs> and they're just starting to open their eyes right now. Like, no, seriously, I'm gonna hurt. Here, I'm gonna show you, look you look guys up. a photo. <gasps> are they snuggle bunnies? Oh Jesus! They are like. Who needs real human? And then babies? look at the guy. The guy's just like this, like tattooed, pierced person, and they the the squirrels like they're snuggle in him. his neck. Oh my god! I know, I know. And okay, like tell tiny. tell us their Instagram handle. So again. their name is there's just a, an underscore between each word, but it's Mabel and Marty McSquirrel. How many followers? They only have seven hundred and seventy one followers. Blow it which is up! Ridiculous. They Blow it have up! A million. How long have the squirrels been living? It, I think they're like well, one was Valentine's Day, so oh, it's val- been like okay. a month. 
for like a month. I what a present. I'm sorry. I think they are. <laughs> no one steps on them. They're like, them. Uh, we also had a pit bull. And let's just say this account's disabled. <laughs> oh, just my, kidding. Pit like, bulls are fine. My fourth grade or third grade class found these kittens and like tried to keep them. And then they all died. Oh, no. Fuck, man. <laughs> Did someone poison <laughs> them? Oh, no, I think they were just like, I think... I was living in Japan and like the schools weren't really regulated. Like, why can you just bring like straight kittens into a classroom? Don't touch and, those. Like, so I think like everyone was just touching them too yeah. much. My teacher was like, oops. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> That's, that'll change you a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> as, you, as you grow in age. Yeah. Here are some fuzzy angels. They're, They're dead. dead. <laughs> yeah. That's a life lesson right there. Somewhere in there. That is a life lesson. Yeah. Um, Once my family found a cat in the car engine. Oh yeah. When <gasps> parents. The kittens, right? No, my, my mom turned on the <gasps> turned over the engine in the truck, and then we just heard <laughs> and saw white fur. And then Why am I uh, laughing? there was a beautiful, beautiful blue eyed white snow white cat that Dead. had crawled in to the engine compartment. We got it out. It had all these scuff marks, and it was like the fuck. <laughs> and then we gave it to my uncle, and my uncle's neighbors were tasked with naming it, and they were from. China, I think, mm-hmm. didn't speak a lot of English, and the cat's name was Snake, and it lived very long. Hmm. Oh wow! Its name was Snake, that though. Was not how I. I know. For a cat, <clears throat> what a I know. Beautiful journey. I know. That was not. I I'm was sure like, she's dead now. That Don't worry about it. The whole time I was like, and it died, and nope. it, I was waiting nope. for it to lived die. a goddamn beautiful life in Berkeley. Good for that cat. Named Snake. Good for the cat. It was good. Cool. Um, let's do another slumber party game. Okay. <laughs> All right. We actually brought the. Oh, what are you reading right now? Anything good? Oh, or- I'm still reading uh, Madame Bovary. Yeah, oh. Madame Bovary. there was never a first episode, so you can still yeah, be reading. Yeah, sure, there was. I refound re- it. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. You're still liking it? So I, I, because I, I stopped reading at the end of act, the part one, and so now I'm in the middle of part two. You what guys, an idiot! I'm gonna tell you. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? You know, some people can't read at all. Well, they're even bigger. <laughs> no, I mean they really. They are. only listen to podcasts. Yeah. One word that might be two words. I don't know because I don't read audiobooks. Oh, right. Mm-hmm. I'm listening. Okay, so we had um, what's his name? Pat Walsh on, and he recommended a book, and then another read uh, listener was like, "Absolutely read this book." Right. And I'm fucking obsessed. It's called "City on Fire" by Garth Risk Halberg. Uh, <laughs> but it's a really good. the The story is really fucking interesting, and you can I can tell that I like it because my house is super clean, nice. and I have a shit ton of makeup on because I'm just sitting there listening to a book while I put my makeup on, and I just want to keep listening, so I just put fucking makeup really? on. Really, you do look great. I have a lot of makeup on right now. I I didn't know that really? you were wearing a lot of makeup, but yeah. I was like, oh, you look very fancy. Beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, and your eyelash extensions, oh. fucking killing it. Oh yeah. my god, Thank gotta you. get those. Love them. Jackie O'Lashes. Jackie, did you Jackie Jackie's O'Lashes. Online. She yeah. is a dream come true. She really is. She's a former, uh, former, former past guest. Listen to her episode. But yeah, la- the lashes. Like you, f- I wake up and I don't feel like a disgusting like hag. You, you just like don't. You are put- not a disgusting but hag. You know when you wake up and you're like, oh, and you're like, I can't leave the house. Oh yeah, it makes everything better. You wake up looking like you're like about to go on stage, like yeah. around like a Broadway play. Yeah, like, and that, like you I don't am. need the rest of your makeup because you just have these big old lashes. I'm yeah, obsessed yeah. With they it. look fantastic. They look really, really Thank good. you. Um, let's do another slumber party. Game. Rapid fire. Boo 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 boo. Let's do killing a Benjamin. Oh yeah, you have a hundred dollars. Mm. Blow it. Right, don't right worry now. about it. Don't pay off any bills. Spend it on something stupid. Walk out the door. Kill that Benjamin. Want? What do you want? How do you blow it? No guilt. You can go to a bar and buy everyone a drink. You don't even have to give it to orphans. No. Oh, no. You can't give it to orphans. <laughs> I'm, I mean, I'm voting that you can't give it to orphans. Can you buy, What if you bought an orphan? Okay. And you can do human trafficking. Oh, my God. Or you can watch, but you uh, can't give email it Allie and Georgia at gmail.com and tell us that we're terrible people. <laughs> Remember how this is the better episode of the two? We're <laughs> professional. Remember how this was our la- the fucking FCC took us off the air? Right, 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 right. Okay. Please don't buy orphans. Don't buy orphans. I would never. <laughs> what would I do I with them? Ju- <laughs> I think I would blow it on food and drinks, which is what I do anyway. <laughs> yeah. But that still seems like the most logical option. What yeah. would you get? Yeah, what would you get? What kind of really food? fucking drunk? <laughs> wow! <laughs> and this has been Slumber Party with Allie and Georgia. <laughs> I like the what what because because the late night snack thing. Like, what if you only do that when you go out at night and you have like a fucked up late night snack? You know my favorite question. Right. So like, what bar? Like, I know that fucking Rustic Inn down the street has the best fucking chicken wings in town. Mm. 
Do they, like, or are you just more drunk when you eat them? I'm not always drunk when I eat them. Okay, just checking because you know, you know how sometimes yeah, you go to the mall oh, and they yeah. give you a sample wing and you're like, shit, dog. Yeah, right. And but then you're you also just, them and you're like, oh. But you're at the mall and you're just hungry. Right. Like it's totally. obvious, you know, timing. Totally. No, they have really good chicken wings. And, and what were we talking about? We were talking about midnight snacks that you eat regrettably. So what would yours be? I always I love burritos, so yeah. I just wherever's the closest place because yeah. yeah. I love a good soggy burrito. Allie, what's yeah. yours? Late night bullshit. Vegetarian Thai, right? I, you know what? Fuck vegetarian Thai. Yeah, right what do you now. really want? Uh, bzz, 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 um, I do love a burrito, but I love uh, deep fried shrimp tacos. Ooh. And if there's no one around, I'll fucking put some cabbage on that. What do you mean if there's no one around? Because and instantly I'm I look like I'm second trimester pregnant. <laughs> like the cabbage is so my stomach inflates. Does that not happen to anyone else? From cabbage? Sure. I never know how foods like <laughs> I never yeah. correlate what I'm eating. Me to neither. How I'm feeling. I, I haven't figured it out. Me neither. I get, like liver fluke distension. <laughs> Allie said to me one day one day you were like, That's gonna give you gas if you eat it. And like two I'm hours sorry. later I was like, Why do I have gas? And you were like, you remember how I said that's going to give you gas if you eat it? Do you like, rem- I hadn't even remembered that she said it. Do you remember what it was? Sugar alcohol. No, you were eating a fiber one bar with like maltitol in it. And right. it was like 1900 grams of fiber. And you're like, I'm going to eat this. And I was like, oh, that's going to hurt. I just wanted to go to the bathroom. And then later <laughs> that day, you were like, something is wrong. I've never been so bloated. I need to see a doctor. And I was like, girl, do you remember four hours ago when you ate that fiber nope. bar? Totally forgot. And then yeah. I started laughing so hard. I know. I forget where we were. <laughs> but we were was... filming. And oh, I was no. like, I have gas. Yeah. Okay, well, it happens. Yeah, you guys, we're a, we're a whole biome. I met someone last <laughs> night. Who gave me her business card? Birthday party. She is a shamanatrix. What is that? Sit with it. Sit with that a minute. Oh, I. I mean, I think I know what she is, and I really. Can I tell you guys a a story about your wedding? That's really funny. (gasps) Yes. Yes. Well, no, it's not that cute though. Is it the one where my cousin steals a bottle of vodka from behind the, and they cut us off early? Did you know about this? Oh, you know what? This is our new segment called Egregious and Kathy Lee. You're going to tell us, we're going to share something egregious that happened, starting with George's wedding story. Okay, I'm starting. So at 1030, (laughs) we're supposed to have the, we're supposed to have like open bar. We have open bar. Vince and I are paying for the whole fucking thing. Like our our parents either are dead or don't have money. Right. So Vince and I are paying for it. Um, And we have an open bar because we're not monsters. And uh, so at some point. The bar is closed a half hour before it's supposed to, and so Vince goes up to the fucking people. He's like, "What the fuck?" And they're like, "Someone, a some people are too drunk," which are like, "Yeah, but so cut them off." B, um, someone stole an entire bottle of Kettle One from behind mm. the bar and poured it into the punch, the Virgin Punch, the Virgin Punch, and it was an open bar. What? You don't need fucking more booze. Ugh. And children I, drinking from this no, cauldron. There, there weren't supposed to be children drinking from it because there were no children invited to the wedding except for my nephew because he's my nephew who request, kept requesting Slayer. Yes. He's like, we get it. You're cool. Um, it's cool nephew. You're five. <laughs> I'm like, That's a fucking you. cool nephew. Anyways. I'd buy that orphan for a $100. I know. I, would I know. Too. It's too bad he's not So, right. yeah. Ew, right? Mm-hmm. Ew. So, so that was a, stole a bottle of kettle. That was straight up egregious. And Naughty. you don't, do you have any suspicions? I think someone has it on video oh, okay. of her pouring a bottle of vodka into the punch. Oh boy. And the her person, name is Schmally Ford. <laughs> <laughs> Although Allie did kick some people out of my fucking wedding, which is like I, the most badass thing I've ever heard of in my life. Do you guys ever do something so cool that you replay it in your head? Like reverse PTSD. Yeah, could, what's that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. I've been replaying this reverse PTSD situation from Georgia's wedding all week. And I've been like, Go. that was great. <laughs> These where it's Georgia's wedding and, and Georgia like did the whole wedding herself. Like she and Vince, like again, paid for everything, booked everything. It's like so DIY, but it's like so adorable. Cause my like, friends are amazing and help me. We Thank tried you. to help a lot. We so we were like Georgia's army to like get this shit done. Right. Mm-hmm. And so like all day, we're just like, boom, 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 getting all this stuff done. Party comes. It's, I should say, for listeners and Courtney, it was the most fun wedding I have ever Thank been you. to in my life. It was so fun. The music was great. It was like a, such a good vibe. It was so Someone, fun. I think it was Lizzie said that you have the most fun at weddings that you, you're you pretty sure the couple's going to stay together. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's yeah. true. Like, yeah. you're not going to dance at a wedding when he's going to cheat on her. So- 
less stressful vibe yeah. for sure. You didn't have a single objection. No, thank God. No townspeople Fuck. came and protested, and that was just so beautiful. <laughs> anyway, so these people come in. It's in San Luis Obispo, and these, I see like three girls walk in, college age girls, wearing like American Eagle outfitters head to toe, and I was like, oh bitch, no, what are you doing here? Mm-hmm. And they make a beeline for the open bar, and I was like. I know every single person at this wedding. Like, mm-hmm. I, everyone. You do. So I asked them. I was like, oh, hi, girls. They're like, hey. And I was like, so you guys you guys are here for the wedding? They're like, yeah, we're friend of, friends of Georgia. And I was like, oh, really? How do you know her? And they're like, uh, we went to school with her. And I was like, oh, really? Where'd you go to school? They're like, Cal Poly. First of all, Allie knows I fucking didn't go to college so hard. But I was like, maybe they say... Like, at least do some research and yeah. say Irvine or yeah. something. Like, maybe they're podcast listeners or something. Maybe they're fans sure. and they just showed up or something. And I was like, maybe these are sweet girls. No, they were just 21-year-old lushes in for the... Get some free Chardonnay out of it. And then you fucking chase them out of there. Not before I asked them a litany of questions. Oh, it. really? What did you study? Oh, really? Oh. What classes were your favorite? Oh, I really? Do you guys have the same taste? Like, everything... Like, just making them uncomfortable. So purpose. uncomfortable until the two were, like, tugging one girl's arms to be like we should go we should go and i was like you guys need to get the fuck out of here oh, love it. it was so, so cool. great they left and then i beat them to death in the alley <laughs> <laughs> how dare they but um it was fun kicking them out because i was Thank but you. i did tell them i was like you know it's funny george and vince are paying for every single drink here so i know you you're said in line. that yeah i was like so i know you're in line for the bar but don't even think about it Fuck yeah, thank you. So I was like, hell no, girls. They said one of the groomsmen invited them. I'm like, that's funny. Groomsmen? Vince doesn't have groomsmen. We had no wedding party. That's adorable. Ew. Uh, what did you say is? that, really? Yes, I said that. I he became mom no of... groomsmen. Yeah, I was like, that's interesting. And what did their faces Vince, do? They were, two of them looked mortified, and one of them looked like she was probably going to stab one of her parents at some point in her life. One of them oh was God. a bad kid. Even yes. when you're like young and stupid, like I feel like I never did stupid things at the expense of nice people. Yeah. Uh, you know what that's called? Audacity. Yeah. How the fuck do you think that's okay to... to what's your egregious and Kathy Lee? Of this week? Yeah, or this lifetime. Oh, this lifetime. Of this week or this lifetime. Um, but someone did something and you're like, who the fuck do you think you are? Well, this, one's, I, <laughs> this one's kind of funny, but it is probably like... It's just an... I don't even know if it's technically egregious or this person must have been insane. But oh, no. when I was in college, I... <laughs> I went across the hall to my friend's room to watch The Simpsons and Rachel Ray, as I did every yeah. whatever the, the day it was. And so I'm like 17. And <laughs> I go into her, her room and there's a guy in a wheelchair sitting in her room. And it was like one of those things where we were both young and so no one was addressing the situation. Mm-hmm. But basically what had happened is this guy like got into my freshman dorm building, <laughs> went up to the 12th story and asked to plug in his wheelchair. <laughs> Nobody knew him. Nobody knew him. <gasps> but she was like afraid, like socially of like <laughs> dealing oh, with the person in a wheelchair. That weird that that, he, what an easy way to murder a bunch yeah. of college and girls. So I'm like, no. assuming, like, I'm like, she must fucking know this guy. And then he was asking us to like change the channel for him and it was like <gasps> oh hell no and then finally like security like came up and got him but i i was like why but but it, i mean he was like no friendly you yeah. know what i mean he was probably like hey man i'm sorry my wheelchair is like running why out of- <laughs> there's no reason to go to a room full of girls I at know. the front desk there's a fucking outlet <laughs> a building but full get, of girls yeah so, go to starbucks go to starbucks i get so scared thinking about that moment and the fact that we spent like a half an hour with this Fuck. fucking stranger not addressing like i was just like i i don't know how oh, bridget no. would know this man but like, you're like i can't I don't leave like, and leave her yeah yeah you should have left her. No, uh, that, uh, yeah, those moments in life where you're like, I probably could have died there. Yeah. But oh. you could have been a fucking. Oh, absolutely. The way fucking Ted Bundy would be like, I, my arm's broken. And he had like a fucking splint on his arm. He did. Can you help me carry this shit to my <gasps> my van? It's it's That's how they did it in fucking. It, uh, Silence, Silence of the Lambs. Silence of the Lambs. Help me with my couch. I'm going to help you. Yeah. Your instinct, especially as women, is always to be yep. polite. Yep. Oh, always be polite. The funny it. thing about you, Georgia, is I've known you for like 10 years and I never think that you do spiral because you have always you always put on this air of like, well, like being a badass. Myself. 
Because but I, like, don't. I never think about you spiraling because I'm always like, oh no, Georgia knows what she's doing. Like, she's a badass. Yeah, but thank you. It's not a badass. It's that I've been going to therapy for so fucking long that I know that when I'm starting to spiral, here's what I need to say to myself because it's not true. Well, okay. I've been going to therapy too, but I haven't, no one's told me the magic words. What do you say to yourself oh. when you're spiraling? You just know when to, first of all, you're on Wellbutrin and Effexor. God damn it. And they make you not spiral. If I weren't on medication, I would spiral constantly. That's what they're, that's what they do for me. Okay, so, so it's an, and it's an anxiety attack. It's an anxiety. It's not even an attack. It's a constant state of anxiety Aye. that you are constantly looking for things that you're doing wrong and saying wrong and feeling like you guys fucking keep apologizing for shit and you don't Sorry. need to. Yeah. I'm like, just apologize. <laughs> oh. If you had knocked that drink over and I apologized, apologized. <laughs> I'd be like, girl, it's I'm just, working on that. That's great. It's, it's so hard. I know it is really hard because you're like, you're just, you're always taught like in my family, like we grew up religious. So you just taught, I was taught the actual words like the meek shall inherit the earth. Right. The meek don't get shit. No. You guys like, I'm going to be, but the other thing is like, I sometimes I think about Beyonce and I'm like, if Beyonce were like, I shouldn't dance so much. It's I'm probably, sorry. Pretty showy, or like, yeah, you we would right, lose looked, a lot. Yeah. But like, I because we've we've had similar, ex- not you guys super similar. I think experience. have a lot in common, right? With a lot of things. Mm-hmm. Pro- prob- probably, sorry, but probably, sorry. yeah. Okay. Probably very vata. Do you guys know Ayurveda? Oh my god, I'm really vata too. I'm very vata. Oh, I'm a vata in is that the like? Uh, <laughs> we're like, what is that? You're fucking kidding me. Okay, real quick background. <laughs> Tell us. George and I have the same meditation teacher and he was like, he gives you a mantra and he's like, I can't tell you how I picked the mantra. And I was like, it's based on our doshas, isn't it? Ugh. And a dosha in Ayurvedic medicine is like uh, a quality. It's like some people are heat, some people are air, some people are water. And vata is very like, I, he told me I was very vata and I was like, fuck you. And I looked it up and it was like dry hair, dry skin, small boobs. And I was like, fuck you. <laughs> like, everything that like is actually. What's the personality? Um, just really anxious and like. It's like in your head and like you're, it's air. So you're like floating away. You need like ground in. Okay. Right. So you're just like always off just in your like, head kind of a thing. And creative and Creat- stuff. Yeah. But like, Good but stuff. like wound up. And like prone to mental illness. <laughs> <laughs> prone to mental illness. That's a tiny bit. Who isn't? That's if everyone. You're a meditation teacher. Yeah. Probably you're working something yeah. out. Totally. But Scroll. he said you were Pitta. You're, you I'm were Pitta. Pitta. What's yeah. that? I don't know. Corey's Pitta. Really? Mm-hmm. It's fire. And it's like, you get shit done. Yeah, you when like, I listened to your episode with her, when you guys talked about your deep shit, uh-huh. I fucking, it, it was like Allie and I talking Jeez. so hard. Yeah. Yeah. It was a little much. That, I think that was, it was right. We recorded the first iteration of this episode with you right after listening to an episode that came out where you talked about go we'll to, just say it yeah it was yeah. A, a shitty shitty boyfriend that she dealt with and go to um go to we should have a podcast what up do you know what episode number or call, I, it's called a very special episode <laughs> it just we went for the that, is, that yeah. was a really hardcore amazing episode it was yeah i well, mean the whole you. conversation to like be let in on was I think life changing for a lot of people, probably. I hope that it, I'm proud of it. It's weird. It's, I have weird feelings about it, of obviously, course. because in the moment, and if you listen to the episode, it'll be explained, but I felt that it was the best way to handle a situation I was in. I was like, I think this is the smartest way to handle this Definitely. in a way that like serves me. It doesn't hurt anybody else except for the people that are already hurt or whatever yeah, who you know you didn't who are call out in any way yes yeah you didn't name by name anyway. um and uh so i listened to it once to make sure that it was okay and i will never listen to it ever again Good. did you uh, edit anything out i don't think so because i'll edit well i mean we'll edit some shit out and if you didn't, then that's great. That means you. Yeah, I mean, typically we do for time or whatever. But yeah. I, don't, I think there were very minimal edits in, in that one. Yeah. Um, but but it was because Corey did such a good job of, like, leading me through it. She was great. You were That whole conversation between the two of you felt so, like, it felt so intimate. But you guys were both clearly recording it for the world. But But it was, like, this wonderful, like, you know, of your friendship and... Can I yeah, speak? Just, Can I say You're doing sentence? a good job. Get those words oh, out. Lordy. But it was, yeah, like it was about an, it was about an abusive relationship that you had been in and, and like, you know, some stuff came to light around the new year, you know, about, about 
kind of the comedy community and some toxic shit that was happening mm-hmm. and you spoke out about it really eloquently and like really painfully and like mm-hmm. very truthfully and like your experience I think helped a lot of people that George and I listened to it I don't think we even mentioned this when we recorded oh, with you right. initially because we this is why the, that episode when we recorded with you initially was so fucking weird mm-hmm. it's like George and I both listened to it separately the second it came out yeah and she texted me. She's like, do you listen to it yet? I was like, listen, I'm listening right now. And then she's like, you want to come over? And I was like, be right <laughs> over. And we sat. And we don't do that a ton. Yeah. Yeah. Like, we don't hang out unless there's money. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, yeah. Or a, a you wedding. Don't, you, don't, no. you don't, you don't, you uh, don't, you don't accept a hangout um, a, uh, invitation a lot. And so I don't give out hang out that's kind of a bummer that's uh, that's kind of a bummer because like the last i mean sidetrack like the last year or two i've been traveling a lot and i just don't go out as much as i used to because i'm just dead tired all the time but this episode i was like come on you should come over and you're like okay we'll be right there and And so like drank and talked about it yeah we talked about the episode because it was i i had i have had similar experiences with guys and one guy in particular and georgia had kind of Corey's role in that and Mm -hmm. And it's just really for women that have been through situations that were maybe not the healthiest, but maybe weren't super strong enough to get out of it or understand, like, or, like, reconcile the love and the pain of one relationship. Yeah, it's, um, I mean, I'm, it's hard now, because even, like, this week, like, I was out at a bar and, like, people, like, that are, like, people will, in, like, auditions or, like, at a bar, I haven't met them before, I'd be, like, just so you know, like they want to thank me, you know, or like say I listen to your podcast, which is like, well, what I, I feel it's, it's nice. I know it's always coming from a good place and it, in a way, like I'm glad that they let me know because it's like, oh, you know a lot about me in a way now, you know? And so thanks for letting me know. But it's also like in a bar situation, I feel like I'm like, oh, thank you. Like I'm smiling and I'm like, I'm smiling because I'm out right now. Not because I'm like, (laughs) thank you so much. Like, you know, so I feel like I do the thing that like, actresses do when they accept an award or like they're getting nominated and they're just like smiling fakely to, you know what I mean instead of well, being what like can, what can people do because like, that's a good question too because like I haven't run into Beth since that whole yeah. thing happened Beth Stelling who selling. had a who on yeah. December 28th really? it was a Monday why do I remember I things don't, like Rain Man you're a psycho no it just <laughs> is very burned in my yeah. memory um, so I like I don't is. know what to say like came out with a lot of information or like about. someone you know that went through a thing recently that you just run into it's like do I acknowledge it and be like, hey, I love that thing, by the way. Hey, anyways, and like move on? Cause, or do you, and I mean, this is for yeah. anything. I mean, ultimately, I think, because I was thinking about that. I was like, I don't want people to not right. then say it's awkward anything. Yeah, they know. Or, or, you know, I've even been on set where I'm like, I think these people, a lot of them know. Or, you know, mm-hmm. I think as long as your, like, intention is good and, like, yeah. authentic, like, you don't need to say much, but, like, if, I think as long as the intention is good, then okay. it's it's good. It just I think it it's a lot to that's not, not a lot to ask, but it, it is like forcing a lot of conversations with yeah. people. Right. Well, you know? I think there's a lot of people who are in in get into um, who, whose friends have situations and they don't know. Like someone gets cancer, and you're like you just like fade out. I mean, we shouldn't do that. You should be like fuck that sucks. You have cancer, and then right. become and like then have the same relationship with them that you had before. Yes. You know? Yeah. Right. Like when, so, yeah, when someone needs their, it's tough when you're in, when, when someone is like struggling in a relationship, it's really hard for friends because they don't know how to help. And at some point they just are check out. They're like, fuck this. I don't, I can't fix it. You can't fix it. I definitely can't fix it as your friend. Yeah. And then, and well, then we're it getting, means we have the same anxiety, but we can't do anything about it. Like right. that's what's hard is like, I can't fix it. But also every time you tell me about it, I get so anxious and angry I know. for you and I can't keep doing that. I can't keep getting the anxious angry when I can't fucking I can't I'm not the person who gets to decide what happens. I know. It's it's really it's it's a really really complicated thing and I, I think for women in particular like women like want to support each other but they also have to look out for their own like well-being of, of like getting dragged into something and it's kind of funny because like you and Beth Stelling had the same experience with the same person and, and a couple other women we know mm-hmm. we were we were friends with him like we were friends with him very yeah. shocking and that's complicated too because it's right. like 
I, it's not that this person didn't have good qualities but in certain situations. Immediately right. fuck him. Like, that's how I felt. Right. Yeah. Right. Because that's how you get is, like, women protecting women. Yeah. But it, at the same time, like, there's something that came out of it that was really, really interesting to me that was, like, you know, I used to watch, like, I used to watch comedy specials. I used to watch, like, every comedy show ever. And I think all that women really want who go into, like, this field, like, writing or comedy or TV or whatever, all they really want is, like, a voice. Like, they want to mm-hmm. have a voice. Yeah. And I think that really is kind of what distinguishes actresses from comedians, too, is, like, you – it's not enough to be, like, say these lines and stand here. And you're, like, okay. But, like, to actually have a voice of your own and make an impact. And it was so interesting to see you and Beth as comedians having this – voice very loud voice of like don't put up with this and like that's something that had these like reverberations in comedy where you're like yeah like there's like these little micro changes that happen with like pop culture and tv and speaking out and comedy but like a very big like fuck this Mm -hmm. was like it felt almost like a tsunami you know what i mean like Mm -hmm. as opposed to like a little tiny quake and it was like oh fuck like someone spoke out you're not supposed to deal with this and that was huge shit you don't even notice right like you know what yeah that guy is a fucking creep yeah and we just that's how we live and so it's okay right yeah well because you just accept things when they seem normal and then it's like wait that's shitty yeah it's so hard though For you and I, like, for people who are constantly like, oh, I don't know, oh, I'm sorry, oh, am I shitty? Like, it's really hard when you're in those dynamics that are kind of shitty to know whether or not you're inviting the shittiness. Yeah, I mean, you <laughs> feel like a sense of responsibility. Totally. And, and, a, and in a way, like, I'm still working on that aspect of it. I, I know that I was violated, but right. I also have to take responsibility for my choices and actions, you know? And what's the balance of that? Well, your choices and actions have much deeper reasons than on the surface of, like, I just want him, you know, it's of like... Of course, and doesn't it doesn't mean, like, I don't deserve anything, but but it just... Des- but there are things you can change, you can fix. Of course, fix, there are things that great. I can be aware of yeah. that I was... You know. So that's the only thing you yes. like that if you are able to do that and like choose to do that, then you are like f- so far ahead of the person you were in that I know. relationship. Did you so st- great. Wait, did you start meditating? How do you know your Vada? Did you start meditating? <laughs> no, I mean, I no, my therapist is always trying to get me to meditate. And every time I'm saying I'm anxious, she's like, do you want to do a three minute? And I'm like, yeah, she's like, do one this week. And I'd never Mm-mm. do it. three minutes homework. Like, oh, my God. Why do therapists give homework? I'll I mean, no. never do it. She, what I mean, kind she, of homework do they give you? Mine that. never gives she, me homework. She just good. is like, try meditating because yeah. it's good for you but no i have a very good friend who's um into ayurvedic medicine and so she's always this i I actually saw her this morning she has two children and she's like lovely and she's actually very vata but she's like oh my god you're so vata oh no i had this that's so funny but all of the doshas i don't know much about it but there's always there's good there's positive and negative qualities that are of course correlated and we're all a little of something yeah we're not all one thing it is funny though because it's like i feel like since the like since people could use language people have been trying to classify Mm -hmm. personalities Mm -hmm. and it's like i have a bookshelf i have a book on my bookshelf right now that my mom gave me called personality types she's like your dad's such a golden retriever i'm a real beaver or whatever and you're like all right mom no it's no different than astrology which is also bullshit but real fun or like my briggs my what is the The briggs my oh my god like she's like i'm this and your father's this and this is why i like i know but and it's funny though because i feel like as soon as you start like there's something like in me that loves science so much that like as soon as i'm as soon as i'm like involved with someone intimately and i'm like oh this is hard i'm like always like Hmm, maybe that maybe one of us has this, but like I always want to like go to the well. You like, read about it to be like, how do I overcome this? Instead I know, of being like the fuck this person. Oh, I can't, I can't. I have a really hard time saying fuck this person to anyone in my life. Any and like being just being like like bye like bye Felicia like rearview mirror is so hard for <laughs> me. To bye Felicia, you just have to like you have to um what's the word when you put people have boundary boundaries and like compartmentalize compartmentalize them and like you're my friend that I go to lunch with and you and I have this connection on this level but you don't need to let them in all the way and you have the friends that you let in all the way and they're very they're picked very carefully and you you know. But do you ever... Boundaries, yeah. Right, right, right. It's called boundaries. It's this new concept. (laughs) It's this new age thing called boundaries. (laughs) But at the same time, like, but if you keep people, certain people at a distance, like, you'll never really know each other. But you know know what what I mean? Is this getting too deep? No. I love it. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I, well, I think I I fall in love very quickly with people, friends, and like, 
I don't. God, really? I I'm do inert. Too. I'm a noble gasser on dates. I'm just like, yeah. oh. It would be great if I've, you fell in love. Because even with the person who was the shitty person, you were like, it's not going to happen. I don't like them. I don't like them. I don't like, like you weren't even like, and I'm the same way where I like to meet someone I'm like, that's my fucking husband. Like I've I said to, my husband you, so many times. I have to tell, I never ever Please. would have said this in your toast, but <laughs> like don't. you have said marry him yep. so many times and then like a month later you're like he sucks and i'm like but eh, i never fine. said with vince i never said i'm gonna marry him i don't think you did you guys just had a you guys just rolled out into a cool relationship that's what i think happened but i'm the same way we're like i fell in love with someone immediately i have best friends with a new girl immediately like but but you gotta know that it's like it takes a lot of time to be close with someone yeah, I know. I mean, we've known each yeah. other for almost 10 years. And I still don't love you. No, oh my God, I love you so much. <laughs> I'm so vulnerable. I love you, I love you, I love you. That was actually one fun thing about George's wedding. It's like, it forced, it was like, you know the AeroPress coffee maker? I love that thing. I love the AeroPress you coffee maker. You had to maker. be the most vulnerable -est. Vulnerable. Vulnerable -est? Yes, thank you. Sure. Mm -hmm. Like an AeroPress coffee maker takes air pressure and forces water through coffee grounds and i feel like your wedding was the arrow press of emotion it was like we're gonna force so much love down your throat it started with the you're bachelorette gonna party to deal you're gonna have to deal with how much people love you right now and you're just gonna fucking choke it down deal with it do you know what happened can i say anything that happened real quick yes so i walked down I'm get, i walked down the aisle <laughs> by myself which was like a big thing for I me i loved it thank you and i come in and my health family is there and everything and like i'm like i was i in saw vince and i immediately wanted to start like sob crying but i was like don't fuck up your makeup so it just came out of my nose instead <laughs> so i get to the fucking altar and vince like holds my hand and we're and i'm shaking and we're both like this you know we're both this is important N neither of us ever thought we'd actually get married so this is like a big fucking deal and so like i have snot coming out of my nose so hard and i point to his pocket square and he thought i was like fix your pocket square and he fixed it <gasps> what the fuck kind of person oh. would i be and what i and then <laughs> and everyone laughed and i said no i need your pocket square who, who the fuck fixes their toes oh their my fucking, god get that shit in you, check a little bit. and he fixed oh. it and i was like no can i have your and i just snotted all over it okay. <laughs> let's talk about perfect day let's talk about do you guys remember that kevin costner movie and like the opening scene i can't even fucking remember because it was them one million years ago the opening scene is like he's lying in a field of grass and the sun is shining field of dreams a, no, it's not called Field of Grass. <laughs> Field of Dreams. He's like lying. He's like lying there, and there's like money floating all around him, and he's smiling, and the sun is shining in the grass, and you're like, "What a great life!" And then cut to the rest of the movie, and the ending scene. Spoiler alert. Deal with it. Is he was a robber. He got killed, and that ending scene <gasps> is him with a bag of money from the bank he robbed dead exploding all over like him. dead the money's like rolling over him in the grass and the sunshine he just like dies kind of placidly so it's a comedy it's a comedy <laughs> but the idea of like your perfect day being like oh yeah i'd be like lying in a field of money but you're like would you yeah what if money what if he's lying in a field of money and it's armageddon and money doesn't matter anymore it's gotta get that's God, why you gotta buy silver if, no we Courtney, have to buy silver yes what's your perfect day Ugh. um well, I this is something that I say a lot when I'm having a great day. Like yeah. I feel like this is the new best day of my life. This is the new best day. <gasps> I and love it. Happens it. all the time. That's cute. Mm -hmm. And it's usually when something crazy is happening. Like what? Like I the most recent one was. I mean, it's it's not that cool, but it's like those but days where you're like, this is right. so yeah. I was shooting this video for BuzzFeed where we were reenacting. Um, <laughs> uh, we were reenacting like couples trying new sex things. So it was me and <laughs> my two, uh, two of my best friends who are like these, they're gay. Mm -hmm. So they were, they, you know, we, and it was like this girl, Molly, who's an also a good friend of mine. Mm -hmm. And we were like wearing like nude body suits. And the very last episode that we did, like my best friend, Greg, who I think is like the most beautiful man in the world, who I love dearly. <laughs> like we're in like flesh colored, full, unitards and he's like drill fucking me <laughs> <laughs> yeah like i mean like his like smush balls are like up against no! my vagina and, and i'm looking into his eyes laughing. shooting a fucking video for 100 dollars, oh, and like la we're laughing our asses off it's like i was like this is What's, wonderful there's nothing there's no <laughs> other point in life it was wonderful. And then we saw Zootopia, really stoned. And then I hung out with Dustin. And I was like, this is the best day of yeah. my life. If you had gotten paid $100,000 for that, it wouldn't have been as fun. We were saying, this is the best experience yeah. I will ever have. 
Yeah. Oh, that's on set, great. like that we just get to do something this stupid, totally with each other I with no it. pressure. I want to zoom in on Smush Balls and understand what they are. <laughs> like, um, you know, he's like in a body. He's like underwear and like a bodysuit. So like he's a like, nude he's like Smush Balls. Lifted me up and he's like fucking me hard. <laughs> you're like, this isn't how you fuck like... a girl, and you wouldn't know that. <laughs> I mean, we were doing it like kind of cartoony to yeah. like, be stupid. Yeah. I mean, <gasps> but he's also beautiful. Yeah, but he's oh. also like in a fucking like stupid. Yeah, but is how he's so are gay. You? He's so, is he gay? Did yeah. He, yeah. Is so he gay then, or did he get a boner? Is what you're asking. He didn't well, no. get a boner. But that's a beautiful part. Is that, like you can do that and not think like, what does this really mean? Yeah. You know what I no, mean? No, I was like, I, I, it was like very. It felt like an expression of love on both ends. Aww. I like love him so much, that's and so I was sweet. like, I can't. This is the ideal. Like I don't like. We're obviously not gonna have sex. Yeah. But like no... that, we can be this close physically while making people laugh is like really really yeah um, we're lucky you guys we gotta not have day jobs <laughs> well <laughs> i think there are some things broke. i to anyone at their day job listening to this there are some things that are great about day jobs sure for example health care for example reliability reliability mm-hmm. sure but as people who were like i don't know like uh, even growing up i think that like being in being in like any kind of like comedy and writing field was like seemed so out of reach for so long entertainment mm-hmm. industry like you have to be you think you have to be gorgeous and you have to be a pretty person to do it when it's, yeah. really, it's like god it can just be fun you know what i actually let's move on to fuck that because that's, okay. that's one of my fuck that's is involved with okay that. so fuck fuck that, that, it's go. a game we play it's one thing that you love so much you would lay it down and you would drill Fuck it. <laughs> With it. smush balls. Mm-hmm. So hard. And another thing that you hate so much can fuck right off. But we start with a negative thing. That way we can end on a positive. Yeah. And I don't okay. know my negative thing yet. That's okay. I love that you never know your negative until yeah. we're not recording. That's true. And then you know plenty of negatives. I can tell you your negatives. What's my neg- tell me one negative. Lilies. Oh, yeah. They kill cats. I know. Yeah. What? I don't know. Okay, we're going to start with your negative. I hate that one of my cats just pees over the side of the fucking litter box. That's what? my thing. Yeah. It's, Which one? I think it's Mimi. She pees over the side? Just like, just I'm going to pee anywhere. It's like, you know, mm. you're like your, your boyfriend's friend who just like splatters all over mm. the toilet rim. And you're like, how do you not? This is why you're single, bro. Mm. You know Does I mean? that happen? Yeah. Vince has a couple of friends that like really? just pee everywhere. That's not okay. I know. But lilies, PSA, let's give a PSA. PSA, lilies kill cats. If Lily, if Lily eats a cat, no, if a cat eats a lily. You know what I fucking hate is I fucking hate motorcycles. They're such dicks. I I have lived in this apartment for five years. How do you deal with that? I almost put an offer in on a house yesterday. Do it. Yesterday. You know how loud this is, Allie? It's so loud. Almost put an offer yesterday. I was on the phone with my real estate agent at 11.45. Offers were due by noon. I can't believe you're a real estate agent. You're I know. Grown up. Well, I almost put it in. I kind of regret that I didn't because this apartment's so loud. Anyway, but Lily's our friend Catherine Burns, choreographer, crazy ex-girlfriend. She's amazing. Ex-guest. She, ex-guest. ex-guest. We should have her on again, too, because yeah. she, for some reason, hated her episode, but whatever. It was an early one. Um... um she had some lilies in her apartment. I know I've known her for so long that I know that lilies are her favorite flower. Her cat Wilbur munched on one, had kidney and urethra problems. Two thousand dollars in <gasps> in the cat ER. But I remember you posted a picture of lilies in your apartment the other day. No lilies no, in your house for, for cats, cats, you guys. Cat lily. Jeez no. Louise. Um, what do you hate, Courtney? Something you fucking hate. Ugh. I hate all the guys that all the men that run auditions at this one place that I'm not going to say. Oh, I had. Well, last time I had an experience with a, a different man. And then this week I had two experiences with the same one who's even worse. What's the what's what's the thing that guys do in auditions that pisses you well, off? Well, I was I was thinking about because they're mm-hmm. both like older white men. Mm-hmm. And I just noticed that they talk to me and the other and women differently than the guy yeah. and like with me he, he this this week this guy like fought, he like paired me up with somebody and then when he was calling out the names he was like ian and uh, raya or something i was like oh i guess we're not paired up anymore bye whatever this is it uh, and then i and then he was like oh, ian and courtney and i was like oh 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 i didn't you said you know and he didn't like acknowledge that he had fucked up Ugh. and then i like left my purse like on the bench outside or something he was like uh 
you probably shouldn't leave your purse there. Like <gasps> you fucking idiot. Yeah. Oh, what a piece of yeah. shit. Oh my god. And then I, <laughs> and it seems small, but it's like you're. I, yeah, and then I didn't like sign like something that I needed to sign, but it's like you didn't tell me to, and so I'm really working in those situations and not being like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. So I was kind of like, yeah, you didn't tell me that I needed to do that, Good for and you. then he just gives me more shit. Ugh. Um, but and I he don't himself know. a frustrated actor, I'm sure. I Probably. Guess, I don't know, but and then I saw him like interact with some other girl, being like, hey, Caitlin, and, like gave her a hug or or something, and it was and just, she like, played along, right? Yeah, I mean, she seemed younger and yeah. and and all of that but it was just really gross these like subtle ways in which he was being a fucking prick it's because we're too self-aware and we're too aware of other people's actions to like be friendly to someone like that yeah because i'm friendly to anyone who deserves me it, too but i'm yeah. not gonna i'm sick of putting up with people's shit and i feel like yeah i, I get like, it good for you you stab him or what <laughs> <laughs> I didn't stab shank him. I didn't stab Keep him. Keep a shank in that purse. You know what I was thinking about recently? That's super JK, weird. JK, don't was, stab. Yeah. <laughs> that is. Uh, so, like, I was walking down the street recently, and there was, like, a guy who was, like, clearly a drug addict, homeless person, and he said, Hey, beautiful, how's your night going? And I was like, My night's going great. Thank you. How was yours? Like, he was catcalling me, but I didn't feel uncomfortable by it. So, it's that kind of thing where it's like, You're being, if you're being specifically degrading to me, the catcalling thing is really hard for me because we want to be polite. Are you being specifically degrading or are you just, you don't know how to speak to women? What do you think about that? Ugh, I hate no. it when they tell you to smile. Smile, beautiful. No, 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 Sorry. he didn't do that. He was you're just like, like, hey, beautiful, how's your night? When people are like, yeah, when people are, when men are too nice to you, you're like, oh yeah, if I'm not nice back, you're going you're gonna to get aggro at me. Like, so you're like, me. What do you hate, Allie? Um, this is dumb. I hate real estate bubbles. I'm confused by them. Do I'm, you know? What? what I learned what? that if the if the rate of rentals had kept up, if the rate of um, the minimum wage had, wage had kept up with the weight the rate of rentals, okay, then minimum wage should be eighteen dollars an hour right Whoa, now. Oh damn! So uh, I'm looking to buy a loan as a woman, which I feel like part of it is just like very like fist in the air, like fuck yeah, I'm doing this. Like I want to own, time to invest. Da da da. I want a fucking dog and I want a place uh-huh. I don't want to pay landlord anymore. Da da da. And so, but I'm also like, the indis, like, I have crippling indecision. I guess my real hate is crippling indecision. <laughs> All right. Um, what's your love, Allie? What's your love, Georgia? Archaeology magazine. Oh, what the fuck? It's. Well, this- you just told me uh, right before we started that you have too many magazines. I know. Talk this to me about one, this. Every, this one comes out like every two months, maybe. Okay. And it's like. Like our podcast. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a magazine that has just like ridiculous not ri- like they're really Im- incredible articles about archaeology there's like no ads in it because everyone's like absolutely not i will right. not advertise in your crazy magazine but it's a really good magazine what kind of shit do they talk about they talk about like you know this this uh ancient body was found and here's what this means and here's just like insane archaeologist and here's what he does with his life or she does with her life it's just like here's his mentally unbalanced archaeologist (laughs) it's so cool it's like if i you know i'm a fucking you know do you know that i'm a mental uh, detectorist it's like if i could live my life how i really wanted to live it which is be discovering treasures yeah including dead bodies yeah when you do actually use the, the metal detector I'll let you know. Let me know. Will you come with me? I will come with you. If Vince won't be seen with you with a metal detector, I'll come with you. <laughs> I'm actually going to go to the old zoo. And <gasps> okay, can, can I come, come with you? Okay, let's go next week. Well, next week we're going. Oh my God, we're, we're going. going. We're going. I'll so be there. Okay, what do you love? Okay, um, I made a list of a lot of them because I never have them. Read them fast. Easy street parking. <laughs> putting on under eye moisturizer. When mm-hmm. you feel real parched mm-hmm. and you're like, oh, that feels good. It's mm-hmm. like putting on lip balm. Um, I like a clean apartment and I like this, um, this brand of dresses called, it's horrible. No, it's not a horrible name. It's hard to pronounce. It's called Heart of Hot, hmm. H-A-U-T-E, which is really oh, Oat. Heart of like Haute Couture kind of Yeah. Thing? But huh. um, they make yeah. these really great dresses. There was a place that after your wedding, there's a place um, in San Luis Obispo called Hepcat. Cute. H-E-P-Cat with a K. Mm -hmm. And I walked in there and I was like, all right, let me see what you got. It was a bunch of vintage dress, like modern vintage dresses. Recreations. Yeah, recreations. 
and they were awesome. And I went in there and I was like, oh, I immediately had to pee. I was like, there's so many great dresses here. It. And they have sizes, which is like you don't yeah. get when you're vintage shopping. And I bought a dress there for like $139 with foxes on it. And it was made by Heart of Hote. <gasps> Amazing. And um, Hepcat and Salem Luce Obispo. I have never seen you spend it. that much money in a on year a, on clothing. I, I was there with our friend Catherine Burns. And she was like, get, get it, it, get it, get it. Get it. You gotta have um, but they, they fit great. And they have a bunch of sizes. And they're really cute. Love so it. Heart of Hote and Hepcat are my loves. Okay. I think oh you love God. Courtney. What do you love? Um, <laughs> I bought this really great tank top at Urban Outfitters. I keep getting compliments on. What is it? Compliments on. I don't know. It's just like it looks like a bodysuit, but it's like it's not. So you don't have that problem when you're peeing. Yeah. But it's like it just fits me really well, and I keep getting compliments when I wear it. Can you wear it without a bra? <laughs> yes. Cause, that's like because my. Fi- I mean, that's what I truly love is wearing a shirt without a bra. Me too. I hate bras. Fuck bras. Are any of us wearing a bra right now? I am because Why? I because I feel like everyone sees my nipples if I don't. That's true. I feel like I feel like my That's tits true. Are... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. You're like, yeah, your nipples are No, no, I'm saying that's uh, like, true as a person is that your nipples get hard. My nipples uh, well, get yeah. My nipples are just I feel like those who know me well know that they are not <laughs> inconspicuous. <laughs> <laughs> fair I think that's fair enough. Thank you. Uh I sometimes wonder if A, my boobs are too big to not wear a bra and B, I'm too old to wear pigtails. You know, like those are two things in my life that I just do anyway. Right now you are not, not wearing a bra. I'm not wearing a bra and I have pigtails. You should right. do whatever you want. Okay. Yeah. Do we all have to piss so bad right now? No, I peed my pants. Oh, I'm very dehydrated. <laughs> okay, good, good, good. So just me. All right. Uh, where can people stalk you? Yeah. Um, uh, listen to my podcast if you feel like it. Do it's it. called We Should Have a Podcast. No, listen to your podcast even if you don't yeah. want yeah, to. Yeah, fuck you. Fucking love it. Your yeah, eat it, um, bitch. Your ear throats. I don't know. 